Jim DeCrag. Presented by the American Alpine Club and Adidas Terex. A lot of the things you need to know for climbing outside, you already know from climbing in the gym. You already know how to lead climb. You know how to use all your equipment, put on your harness, clip quick draws. You already know how to take lead falls and you already know how to belay. But this video is about the things that you don't know. So I think it's really important to address with new climbers transitioning from the gym to the crag, what footwear you're going to use. Like when I first started climbing, I had no idea I would wear flip flops to the crag and it was kind of a nightmare situation. So <laughs> I think it's really important to always wear closed toed shoes and make sure you're comfortable for long approaches as well. Absolutely. Yeah. I also think what's really important is still investing in a good guidebook or handbook or just directions and because it can be kind of easy to get lost, especially in less developed crags. Coming to an area outside like this, it's not the gym. There's lots of rocks everywhere and we want to find the best spot to put our stuff down and have home base. So we usually try to find the climb that we're going to climb for the day or start on and find a nice spot that's out of everyone else's way. So this spot looks really good over here. Now that we set our stuff down in a safe and secure location in front of the climb, now we're gonna get our gear together and figure out what we need in order to climb this climb. And the first decision that I usually try to make is, am I going to wear a helmet or not? So for the climb that we're about to do now, um, it's a pretty secure climb and there's not a lot of risk for rock fall. And so I probably won't wear a helmet myself, but I'll have my belayer wear a helmet just in case. So my first thought is where I'm gonna put the rope. And so I found a great spot for the rope right here. And then my second thought is where I'm going to belay my climber. So I'm gonna look for a spot that is best for belaying, but also keeps me comfortable. One of the key differences about being outside is the fact that not only is the first bolt sometimes really high up, but sometimes there's not a draw in there already. And so what's really useful is bringing a stick clip so that you'll be able to clip, uh, clip the first draw. And so you don't have to risk climbing up there and using one of your draws to do it and falling on uneven terrain and risking getting hurt. In indoor climbing facilities, a lot of times you have thick padded floors that are pretty flat, so you don't have to worry about spotting your climber. But when you're outdoors climbing, if you're not gonna tip clip the first clip, typically it can be a little higher up in the air and the ground can be pretty uneven and have a lot of rocks. So you wanna make sure you're spotting your climbers so that they can be safe until they clip that first clip. So top roping is pretty different outdoors versus in the gym. In the gym, the rope is usually double wrapped at the top, so you don't feel your partner's weight as much. But outside, you definitely feel your partner's weight a lot, and it can be pretty surprising at first. <laughs> that would have never happened in the gym. <laughs> if you're a smaller person, you might have to use a ground anchor for the weight difference. In the gym, there's usually ones readily available for you, but outside you have to make do with what you have. So you can use a person as shown here, or sometimes you can use a tree or other objects. <laughs> when you're climbing outside, you're gonna notice that the bolts are much farther apart compared to when you're climbing in the gym. So you're gonna have to get used to taking bigger falls. This happens all the time. And this is why you bring a raincoat. <laughs> so I use an assisted braking device, which means that if anything were to happen to me belaying, it's most likely gonna catch still. And that leaves me with a little bit of a margin of error. Um, I always keep the brake hand on like an ATC, but when someone's like hang dogging a route or taking a long time on a route, it makes it less work for me, um, especially when they're taking. When I'm climbing outside, I recognize that there are a lot more inherent risks than when climbing in the gym, which is why you should always pack a helmet to keep your head safe when you're climbing outside in case there's rock fall. Make sure that the end of your rope has a knot tied to it in case you run out of rope for some reason. And also pack a first aid kit in case any emergencies occur. Let's 
See what I mean? So in a climbing gym, there's usually instructors and staff to teach you everything you need to know and help you out to learn how to belay and whatever you need. But when you go outside, you have to be able to do these things yourself. So we learn from each other. And the best place to learn everything, including belaying, rappelling, building anchors, is the ground. Another thing that's really important is not being afraid to ask for help. Um, if you find yourself at the base of a climb and you can't remember something, don't be afraid to ask your climbing partner or someone that's on the ground. It's always better to get a reminder while you're on the ground than it is when you're up at the top of a climb. So now what you're going to do is ask me to take. All right, take. And I'll take up. The next step is that you take all the gear off. All right, cool. So the last thing that you're going to do is untie your knot. All right, cool. Awesome. All right, I did all right. it. All right, nice. Great, and now you can uh, ask me to lower. All right, lower, please. <laughs> Nice. It can be really hard to put yourself out there and transition from gym to crag. There's always embarrassing moments and awkward moments and we make mistakes. But I think as experienced climbers, we can help that ease that transition by being a little bit more open-minded, not judging others, and always being there to lend a helping hand. If you go to AmericanAlpineClub.org and go to the education section, you'll have access to a lot of videos, articles, and research that will make you better informed for your next outdoor experience.